Hey, what is going on YouTube fam? It's Ben here. Welcome back to another video. And today we're breaking down forearm balance, also known as Pinchamayarasana. I'm just here on my mat. I have one block, which we'll use later, but no worries if you don't have one. So I'll go ahead and demo Pinchamayarasana forearm balance. Typically it would start with our forearms down and our palms face down as well. Spread out the fingertips, tuck the toes behind you, and then press the hips up and back into dolphin pose also known as Arda Pinchamayarasana, also known as half forearm balance. From here, we get some nice length in the hamstrings. We can walk the feet forward and maybe kick one leg up as we rise on into our forearm balance. And we kind of, we want to make that more of a float up more than a kind of flail or kick up just to maintain as much control as possible and as much engagement in the legs. And then from here, I'm driving my forearms down I can straighten my legs and zip the inner thighs together. I'm trying to lengthen through my upper arm bones to lift my face further off the mat. And then I'm engaging through the core. I'm trying to spread out through my back, through my shoulder blades, create as much space as possible. And then maybe I'll release my head into a more neutral position. Maybe I'll tuck my legs into that tuck position to lower my center of gravity and really hug knees down and then hug heels to glutes. And then I can gently release out. So there's a lot of action going on in forearm balance clearly, right? It's one of the most challenging or advanced postures in most yoga asana practices. I wanna break down the hand positioning. And so again, typically the forearms are down, the palms are face down. I wanna explain why that may not necessarily be the most efficient use of the hands and arms for most people, although there's nothing wrong with that method. The only reason is, in forearm balance, we have a lot of external rotation going on in the shoulder joint. What I mean is literally we're externally rotating in the shoulder joint, so that's how the elbows come in, and then we can keep the hands forward, creating a nice long foundation for the upper arm bone. So the reason it's a little bit, maybe a little bit more challenging to put the palms down versus have them facing toward one another is because when we're externally rotating the shoulder, to place the palms down, we have to then internally rotate in the elbow joint, right? So we're externally rotating here, we're internally rotating here, and that just creates a lot of activity that our arms have to focus on doing other than holding us upside down and other than creating a deep range of motion. So we can kind of see as well how it's a little bit harder with our palms facing down to reach our arms all the way up overhead and kind of simulate that forearm balance. And it's much easier to do that if our hands are in a more neutral position, heading straight up, maintaining that external rotation into the elbow and into the hand, and then lifting the palms overhead. It's a little bit easier and we can simulate that by coming into a prayer position with the hands or what I recommend, which is grabbing a block, squeezing it, and then we can see it's much easier to be strong as we then lift our arms all the way overhead to simulate that forearm balance position. Again, it's more neutral. It also allows us to more easily activate the biceps and triceps when our hands are in this position compared to when our palms are face down. You can kind of see the looseness in the bicep. Uh, you can experiment on yourself, and then you can see instant engagement in the bicep when I turn my palm, maintain that external rotation, and gives me something to squeeze onto when I press the palms in toward one another or when I grab the block. So that's why I kind of advocate for this positioning of gripping the block or prayer position. So let's go ahead and try it that way. As I rise into my dolphin pose, again, I'm crushing the block with my hands to try to activate the biceps and triceps even more. I'm driving the forearms down, I'm getting long through the upper arm bones as I spread through the shoulder girdle. So the whole shoulder blades spread away from each other, the collarbones broaden, the upper back broadens, everything kind of just starts pulling away from the mat, trying to create as much space as possible. And then I'm trying to focus on length in my hamstrings as I walk the feet forward. And then I can maybe float one foot up and then maybe the other follows. I can keep my gaze down kind of in between the hands and in between the blocks or I can kind of start to drop my gaze, once again, more neutral for the neck, and we'll kind of notice if you start to fall, your head will probably land on that block anyways. So from here, again, the legs can go wherever they want, but I'm continuing to squeeze the block, I'm continuing to engage as much as I can, and I'll notice that the more I engage, the more I work, the stronger the shape is, but also the more challenging it gets because I'm doing it 
the right way in a way that holds me up safely. And when we activate all the way, when we do hard things, eventually we're gonna get tired and we're gonna have to come out of it. And that's just part of it because it's hard to do challenging things for a really long time. If forearm balance isn't really working in your practice right now, don't worry about it. Keep practicing. Spend a lot of time in that dolphin pose leading up to it. Work on getting lighter in your feet, floating the heels further off the mat, or maybe just floating one leg up, off the t up to the sky at a time while remaining active in that leg. Another resource you can use is forearm plank and broadening and protracting through the shoulder blades as well as using a wall to support your practice. For example, you can kind of set up in your forearm balance facing away from the wall and you're about as far from the wall as your legs are long. Then you can set up and you'll go ahead and walk the feet up the wall into a pike position. And now you can simulate the whole forearm balance. Squeeze the block, activate the biceps, drive down, lengthen the upper arm bones, broaden through the upper back, separate the shoulder blades, and then maybe just release one foot off the mat. And then get lighter in the foot that is still on the mat. And then you never know, one day, maybe it'll just feel natural to float on up, knowing that you can always come back down. So that's kind of an intro to form, forearm balance and some things you can do to create activation and growth in your practice. If this is interesting to you, let me know and I'll keep posting drills that we can do and shoulder mobility routines to help get us ready for forearm balance as well as other more challenging postures because there are quite a few challenging shapes out there that we can work up to. And I really think it's beautiful to work towards a goal over time and to keep showing up for ourselves with resilience, with acceptance, and with self love regardless of what happens on the journey so thank you for tuning in i love all of you very much i wish you nothing but peace and love on your journey and i'll be sure to talk to you soon okay much love and blessings peace